From before the foundation of the earth, hymns have united hearts and minds in singing prayers and praises to God and giving testimony, encouragement, and comfort to each other. Our hymns are great spiritual treasures provided by faithful writers and composers who learned the great truths of the gospel and expressed them in music and verse. These hymns reflect the trials and experiences of life and the feelings and thoughts we all share in common. Those who conduct singing can share this great musical heritage with those they lead and unite them in common expressions of love and devotion to our Father in Heaven. Conducting singing has two aspects, the spiritual and the physical. The spiritual part of conducting comes from feelings inside, and it reveals itself through the conductor's desire to lift and encourage the congregation. The Spirit can also direct us as we select just the right hymn for a particular occasion. The physical part of conducting helps the singers start and stop together, to sing at the same speed and in the same style. This tape focuses on these basic physical skills of conducting hymns, how to begin and end a hymn, how to conduct the different beat patterns, how to conduct from one verse of a hymn to the next, and other basic techniques. Learning the physical skills of conducting is like learning to play the piano. At first, progress seems to come very slowly. But after constant practice and persistence, the notes become easier to play, so that soon the player can begin to concentrate on some of the refinements, such as expression, that open the door to the spiritual beauty of the music. Just as a young pianist needs to practice, so you need to practice your musical skills. As you work to learn and practice the basic conducting patterns and techniques, you'll find them easier to do. And then you can concentrate on the spiritual aspects of your calling. This presentation will provide you with the foundations and techniques of proper conducting. It will take hard work and patience on your part to develop correct conducting skills. Therefore, you will want to work through this instruction several times to make sure you understand and can apply the techniques presented. A little later, several brothers and sisters will try out some of the conducting techniques we are learning. You will notice that each has his own individual style, and you will develop your own style too, and that's okay. Just remember to keep your techniques based within the proper foundations, and you will learn from this presentation. Now, as we begin to demonstrate the different conducting techniques, please participate along during the practice sections. It will help you learn the proper action, and you will build your confidence so that you are more prepared to begin your calling. Feel free to stop the tape or rewind it anytime you need extra practice. Let's start with the conducting patterns, or beat patterns. The beat pattern is the pattern your arm makes in the air as it shows the beat of the music. Patterns can show two beats, three beats, or even more. Take a look at your hymn book. Most of the hymns in it can be conducted with a two, three, or a four beat pattern. To find out which pattern to use, Look in the top left-hand corner of each hymn, just to the left of the starting note, and you'll find the time signature, two numbers, one above the other. The top number in the time signature tells you which pattern to conduct. For this hymn, you'd use a pattern of two beats. If the top number is three, you'd use a pattern with three beats in it. And if the top number is four, you'd use a pattern with four beats. Let's start with a two-beat pattern. It looks like this. The first stroke of the arm is down, bouncing slightly out, and the second is back in and up. These two strokes are called the downbeat and the upbeat. 
An easy way to learn the beat pattern is to stand in front of a chalkboard or a large piece of paper and draw it with a piece of chalk or a marker. Down, up. Be sure to draw a pattern in the size and position that is comfortable to you. Now let's try conducting the two beat pattern. Keep your hand close to the lines and just let the beat fall easily and bounce at the bottom. Ready? Down, up. Down, up. One, two. One, two. Good. Stop for a minute. Make sure your wrist is held straight as you conduct. A slight bend on the beat is okay, but don't let it flop. Also be careful of flapping elbows. Hold your elbow still out from your side in a comfortable position. And by the way, good posture is always important. Be comfortable, but stand tall. Now with all of that in mind, let's try it again. Ready? Down, up. Down, up. One, two. One, two. Good. Before we go on, look at my hand for a minute. Notice that it looks best with the palm and fingers relaxed. A baton could be held in this hand position just by curling the fingers around it. You can practice with or without a baton, and whether you use one or not depends on your personal preference and the size of the group. A baton is especially good for large groups, but is seldom necessary. Now that you know the two-beat pattern, let's get ready to conduct a hymn. A piece of music is divided into little units called measures. A measure is divided by bar lines. The downbeat or downstroke of the conducting pattern always comes on the first beat of each measure, right after the bar line. In this measure, the downbeat comes here. And in this measure here is the downbeat. This downbeat is the strongest beat of the measure. In the hymn, Count Your Blessings, the downbeat should fall on these words. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, can you feel the downbeats? Clap them with me as we continue the hymn. Clap, 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 down. Down, down, down. Very good. Now let's fit our two beat pattern to the music of this hymn. The very bottom of your downstroke, or downbeat, is the actual point where the first beat in each measure occurs. You can make a little bounce there to emphasize it. As the introduction to each hymn begins, think down, up, down, up. Begin. Be sure you keep your hand down. Keep the fingers relaxed. Don't let the wrist get floppy, and don't flap your elbows either. Try and maintain a nice, even, steady flow. We're ready to try leading another hymn. Let's do Joy to the World. Notice the 2-4 time signature. We'll use the two-beat pattern. First find the downbeat. One, two. Begin. As you practice, try looking away from the screen to see if you can keep your pattern going with the music.
then occasionally check yourself to see how you're doing. If you want to stop or rewind the tape for further practice, please do so. Now let's go to the three beat pattern. It has three strokes, down, out to the side, and back up, where we begin the pattern again. Let's draw it. One, two, three. Let's practice this pattern a few times. Ready? Down, out, up. Down, out, up. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's good to keep the conducting pattern in an area between the waist and the shoulders. Not too large or too small, and if it's too low or too high, it looks awkward and uncomfortable. With that in mind, let's conduct four more practice patterns. Ready? Down, out, up. Down, out, up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's apply that to a hymn. Come Follow Me requires a three beat pattern. Let's conduct that hymn together. Begin with the downbeat and continue the pattern. During the introduction, think, down, out, up. Down, out, up. Begin. Sweet as the Work also has a 3-4 time signature. Let's conduct this hymn with the 3-beat pattern we've just learned. During the introduction, find the downbeat. Down, two, three. Down, two, three. If you need more practice, stop the tape or rewind it to the beginning of the hymns you want to practice. The four beat pattern has four strokes. The first beat is down, the second in and to the left, the third out and to the right, and the fourth back up to the beginning of the pattern. Down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up. Now to draw it. Stroke one is the downbeat. Two is in, three is out, and four is back up. Let's practice that pattern together about four times. Ready? Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Try to keep your pattern simple. 
it's tempting to make turns a bit fancy and flowery. Of course, you don't want the beats to be stiff or mechanical either. But avoid unnecessary movements that might distract. Let's practice four more measures. Ready? Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's fine. Now we're ready to conduct a hymn with a four four time signature. This time, let's add a congregation. Try and feel the downbeats. Down, two, three, four. Down, two, three, begin. Keep the beat pattern steady. The downbeat always occurs on the first beat of each measure. This hymn has a quiet, devotional nature and is best conducted with a legato, or smooth, flowing style. The sister's face also reflects the reverent mood of the hymn and conveys that mood to the congregation. As you begin the next verse of Abide With Me, Try using a smooth legato style to reflect the faith expressed in the words. We can use the same four-beat pattern to conduct Choose the Right, but the spirit of this hymn is more vigorous and lively, like a march. Let the beat pattern show this mood through vigorous and accented movements. The sister's face reflects vigor and animation to help the congregation feel the spirit of the hymn. As you direct the next verse, concentrate on using this more vigorous, marked style and let your face show enthusiasm. Being familiar with the message and even memorizing the words helps you to feel the spirit of the hymns. When the music director knows the words well, he or she can conduct and sing with the spirit and with understanding also. Hymns that have a six as the top number can be conducted using a six beat pattern. The first stroke is down. The second to the left, the third further to the left, the fourth changes directions to the right, 
the fifth further to the right, and the sixth back up where we started. Now let's practice that about three measures worth. Ready? Down, left, left, right, right, up. Down, left, left, right, right, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's conduct Silent Night, a favorite hymn in 6 4 time. Feel the downbeat and the fourth beat, which is also important in the six beat pattern. Down, left, left, right, right, up. Down, left, left, right, right, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, four. One, four. Down, left, left, right, right, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Very good. Another simple way to conduct a slower hymn that has six beats to the measure is to use a double three beat pattern. The first one should be a large one. One, two, three. Followed by a smaller one. Four, five, six. You won't even need to practice this pattern because you already know the three beat pattern. Be sure to keep the second pattern small so that there is only one strong beat in each measure. Let's use this double three pattern now in another verse of Silent Night. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, Four. One. Four. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. Down, right, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold and release. There are other ways of conducting six beats depending on the tempo. A fast-paced hymn, such as Master the Tempest is Raging, is usually conducted with a two-beat pattern. The first three beats go down with the downstroke. The last three beats go with the upstroke. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, four. One, four, one, four, one, four, down, up. Hold. Suppose you feel a tempo that seems too slow for a two beat pattern, yet too fast for a complete six beat pattern. You might feel comfortable conducting such a tempo with this next pattern. Visualize a four beat pattern. Conduct beats one and two by pausing at the bottom of the downbeat like this. One, two, move to the left for beat three, and over to the right and pause for beats four and five, and back up to the top for beat six. Let me show you what I mean. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. Let's go back to Silent Night and use this modified pattern as we increase the tempo a little bit. Join along. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, four. One, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Perhaps this pattern may be helpful to you. The hymn book includes a section on the standard beat patterns. All the patterns we've learned and practiced are illustrated in the hymn book. The church also has other materials on conducting that are available to you through church distribution centers. In addition, your ward and stake music leaders can be very helpful to you. If you would like to practice the beat patterns we've learned, now is a good time to stop and rewind the tape. As a conductor, one of your jobs is to get everyone to start a hymn together. You do this through a signal called the preparatory beat. Let's call it the Q beat. This beat is an arm motion that tells the congregation that the hymn is beginning and gives them a chance to take a breath. It happens on an imaginary beat just before the first beat of a hymn. For example, if the hymn begins on count one, which is the downbeat of a three-beat hymn, the cue beat is given on an imaginary count three or upbeat. Notice that the cue beat is conducted in the smooth or legato style of this hymn. Give the cue beat, raise your arm moderately high for several counts before the hymn begins. Then, when the introduction ends, give the cue beat and begin conducting. Think one, two, cue. One, two, three, down, two, three, down, two, three. Now watch again and try it along with the conductor. Your arm goes up, ready, two, cue, down, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Notice the time signature and the beginning measure of how great the wisdom and the love. It is not a full measure, but rather just one note. This note is like the last or third count of the measure. When a hymn begins on count three, like this one does, the cue beat is on two, the beat that moves out to the side. Let's watch as this brother begins, How Great the Wisdom and the Love. He raises his arms several counts early, then one, out, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now you try it as we watch him again. Think one, two, three, one, out. Look at the time signature in the beginning measure. This hymn also begins on count three, making the cue beat occur on count two. Let's all practice the cue beat. Think the beat. One, two, three, one, out. I stand all amazed at the love Jesus offers me. Now you try it as the brother begins this hymn again. Did you do it right? This is a good place to rewind the tape and to try it again. Another important part of conducting is the ability to hold a beat, to create a pause in the music. 
This is a fermata, or hold. It tells you to hold or to extend the note just below it. Show this by holding your pattern a little on the fermata, then doing a cue or a preparatory beat for the next count, and continuing on with the pattern. Let's conduct the first two lines of this hymn together. It's a four-beat pattern, and the hymn begins on the fourth count, the upbeat. How do we begin the hymn? The cue beat will be on count three, the beat that moves out to the side. On what count do we hold the fermatas? Both fermatas are held on count three. We'll begin with an introduction. Think of the downbeat. One, two, cue. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, hold. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, hold. Four, one, two, three. How did you do? Did you remember to cue after each fermata? Let's try conducting this hymn together. One, two, three, four, one, two, hold. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, hold. Four, one, two, three. Did you do it right? Take the time to rewind the tape and do it again. At the end of a hymn, the final note is usually sustained whether it has a fermata or not. The conductor usually conducts the final chord as if there were a fermata, rather than beating out the actual number of counts. Hold the final chord until it's time for its release or cutoff. Then make that cutoff with a circular motion that stops exactly when the singing should stop. Then lower your arm. Let's do the last four measures of this hymn together. Very good. Now let's try the last line of verse four along with this sister. Remember, the last note is held for three counts. How did it go? Try it again if you'd like. Notice that in the hymn, How Great the Wisdom and the Love, a hymn in three, four time, the fermata, or hold, occurs on beat one. Beat one, of course, is the downbeat, and it usually moves downward. However, because of the fermata, the downstroke needs to be shortened so that the beat remains high and visible for the fermata, and then moves quickly to the position of count two for the cutoff. From there, the process is just like we've already practiced. Let me demonstrate this fermata for you, starting at the pickup to measure eight, and sent the savior. Down, two, three, down, two, three, down, two, three, fermata, Q, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, hold, and release. Let's conduct the first verse of this hymn. Concentrate on using a correct cue beat to start the hymn then try to follow through the fermata. The hymn begins on count three, and the cue beat is count two, out to the side. Ready? Here comes the fermata.
Now let's look at how we make the transition from one verse to the next in this hymn. If the conductor keeps a strict tempo through the transition, there's no extra time for the singers to breathe or swallow or move their eyes to the beginning of the next verse. Besides, it is not musically satisfying to rush from one verse to the next. A good conductor needs to make time for the singers so they're ready for each new verse, but without losing the momentum of the hymn. The easiest way to accomplish this is to hold the last chord as though it were a fermata, and then follow it with a large and definite motion that serves both as the cutoff and the cue beat for the verse that follows. Let's look again at our example. The first verse of the hymn, How Great the Wisdom and the Love, concludes on count two, while the next verse begins on count three. Let me demonstrate ending the first verse and beginning the second, starting at the words to suffer, bleed, and die. One, two, three, hold. And one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Did you notice how we slowed the tempo without breaking the momentum? Let's try it together again. And one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. If necessary, please rewind the tape and rehearse this important process again until it is easy for you. Remember, at the very end of a hymn, on the last chord of the last verse, you make a complete release or cutoff to the end of the hymn using the circular motion. Now we're ready to conduct through two complete verses of How Great the Wisdom and the Love. We'll begin with an introduction. Three, one, 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 two, three, one, three, one, down, down, one, 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 two, three, hold, and one, two, three, one, two, three, hold. Q, one, 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 two, Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, 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 two, three, hold, three, one, three, one, two, three, hold, release, and down. You'll need to practice each of these skills individually again and again until they become second nature to you. Practice the two-beat pattern, the three-beat pattern, the four-beat pattern, the hold and the cutoff, until you're comfortable enough with each to join them together to conduct a hymn in front of any group, your family, your ward, or even the tabernacle choir. Now for your final exam, follow me. Try directing the Tabernacle Choir in Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Watch Remember, stay with the, the basics that you've learned. Form it as a double L, but as, as a single flip del so that it doesn't slow the tongue down. Oh, here's our conducting student. Welcome. Come right up on the podium. Choir's looking forward to a great experience with you. I'm sure you'll have a good time. You know the four beat pattern that matches the time signature and where the preparatory beat starts on count three you'll want to conduct with a firm and vigorous beat. Ready? It's all yours.
Are you feeling the thrill of conducting? The thrill of becoming part of the music itself? May the Lord bless you as you unite your brothers and sisters in singing praises to him.